L'un d'eux ressemble à un bébé humain. Il s'appelle CB2. Bardé de 200 capteurs tactiles recouverts par une peau artificielle grise, CB2 est capable de simuler les comportements d'un nourrisson. Mesurant 1,30 m pour 33 kg, ce gros bébé réagit au bruit, nous regarde, roule sur le dos, bat des bras et des jambes, et peut même faire quelques pas avec l'aide des humains. Ce B2 servira d'outil d'apprentissage pour les futures mamans ou les sages-femmes. à Hiroshi Ishiguro est de pousser la ressemblance avec l'homme à l'extrême. Certaines de ses créations sont presque troublantes, si proches de l'homme qu'on pourrait s'y méprendre. Et là où il met le plus de cœur à l'ouvrage, c'est certainement dans la fabrication de ces femmes robots plus vraies que nature. Bonjour, je vais me présenter, je m'appelle Réplique U2. Les robots qui parviennent à se fondre avec les humains et qui arrivent à communiquer avec eux d'une manière naturelle deviendront bientôt un nouveau moyen de communication fiable. Comme vous le voyez, mon robot humanoïde est très proche de l'homme. Elle a un physique humain et des réactions humaines. Regardez, je la touche comme ça. Voilà, elle n'aime pas ça. Et si je lui mets la main sur l'épaule Hé, hey, qu'est-ce que vous me faites ces femmes humanoïdes possèdent un important panel d'expression faciale, de véritables mimiques humaines. Elles sont vouées à devenir hôtesse d'accueil ou même présentatrices télé, des fonctions dans lesquelles la machine se substituera à l'homme. Le professeur a même d'ailleurs créé son jumeau robot, qu'il compte un jour envoyer à sa place à des réunions. Une sorte d'avatar lui permettant de faire de la téléprésence. En clair, son idée est de téléguider les actions d'un robot qui nous ressemble de chez soi, sans avoir à se déplacer. La machine sera ainsi le prolongement de nous-mêmes. And this is a new version of uh, the robot. Uh, it's a new version that we released last month uh, with improvement uh, requested, asked by some of, of our customers. Well, for instance, we have longer arms, we have curved arms because customers wanted to have a larger working space. So, so this is how we designed this robot. So in this version, we improve the quality of the robot in terms of robustness, Uh, we improved the, the motion engine, having a much smoother walking, uh, reliable and able to work on the obstacle without falling down. Else. May I? No, keep quiet. Uh, so that in terms of software, with some uh, face recognition engine, so we, the robot is able to recognize your face once he has learned it. Uh, picture recognition, image recognition, or this kind of things that help turning him more interactive. You can see that? So, very clear expression. But I want him to stop making noise during my speech. Can someone please switch on the light? I promise, I'll be quiet now. So, if we really want the robot to be able to help people, humanity, we need to have uh, the robot accepted, casting positive effects. And this is a question of, of shape of the robot, this is a question of design, but it's more a question of uh, behavior. Hey, now! Tell us a story. Okay. A 
galaxy is living in dark times again. Here, here we demonstrate the uh, We use on operations uh, to carry out surveillance on any operations we need to do out in Afghanistan. It's useful basically because, see if you carry out tasks yourself and you basically act like another man in the patrol. It's a great bit of kit for the infantry soldier because, uh, say we were clearing this compound here, 
and we'll multiply this compound and it's all secure. The next compound we were given is a compound over at the distance there. Instead of sending a soldier from this compound over there to clear that compound, or a team, all we'll do ideally is put the black hole up in the air, get eyes on into that compound, so then straight away we're going to identify what's in that compound, we'll do an assessment straight away on what we need to achieve to get into that compound and clear it. Once it starts to warm up, then you wait for the rel. When it rels, the back propeller then starts rotating, and at which point then you clear to release the black hole in. It is affected by the weather due to the size of the black hornet there. The wind is the biggest problem. In fact, that a, a good gust of wind will then send the black hornet off. However, it's got a number of countermeasures. I can press home and the hornet will automatically turn around and come back to the base location. You get 20 minutes flight time on it. So from you sending the black hornet up, you've got 20 minutes in the air. However, you get two black hornets per station. So when that black hornet's going down after, say, 15 minutes, you need to bring it back. And you're not quite happy with what was in the compound or what was on the vulnerable point, yeah, straight away you bring that back up, black hole at home, you then reprogram the next black hole within a minute, get it up and send it back out to the same location. When that black hole is up 20 metres in the air, you will not be able to hear it. It's quiet. You're quiet and when you put it over 100 metres, you're not even be able to see it, which will then give you better arcs for looking at the compounds. That there is a light server for the next six months or nine to us there. Just a bit of kit. The U.S. military has designed drones so small that they're starting to look like tiny insects. These are used to get into areas that they normally wouldn't be able to reach. These secret insect drones are said to help the fight against terrorism and help protect us. Yeah, they look cool and could make a fun toy, but is this something that could cause concern in the future? People in New York and the Washington, D.C. area have been reporting strange sightings of what they describe as tiny machines hovering around different gatherings like the anti-war rally in Lafayette Square last month. A student was convinced these were not real bugs. The FBI, CIA, and other various government organizations have all denied such claims of having mini spy drones at work. I guess if we generally trust the government, they would only be used to keep our nation safe. After all, if government organizations really wanted to spy on us, I'm sure they can find a less expensive way to.